Hi, welcome to Engage in EMEA. Um, I'm James, I'm going to be hosting you today. We've just got a quick legal slide to show you. This presentation may, con uh, may contain forward-looking statements, any trademarks and not endorsements. Awesome, so now I can properly introduce myself. I'm James, I'm a customer success manager and I've been here at Smartsheet for almost two years now. Um, my role is really great. I get to partner with customers uh, all over, all across Europe and get them the most value out of their, their Smartsheet uh, instances and, and help them in that respect. And it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Karina from the wonderfully named Smart to join us today to, to talk through her uh, change management processes. So welcome, Karina. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hi, James. Um, thank you uh, for inviting me to participate at this event. It's good to see you again. Um, I'm excited to share our story and some quick tips uh, on how to best leverage Smartsheet. My name is Karina. I have got over 12 years experience in IT industry. In my past roles, I was working as a network engineer and a team lead. I always had a sweet spot for technology, which every now and then will bubble up and I just can't help myself getting involved. I joined Smart in 2018 as a feature backlog manager. At the time, the role was mainly concentrated around introducing new features and functionalities and working mainly with the product team to identify those. I've been running our backlog for almost over um, about two years now, starting with a very small set of defined functionalities. Our main focus is um, creating value and at the same time maintain, maintain service levels while continuously delivering new functionalities. As Smart has grown and our teams were expanding, the backlog started to grow over me. It is including now all new project initiatives and functionalities as well as improvements to the current features. And uh, on top of it, there are some architectural changes. Founded in 2014, Smart was created to modernize the retirement industry in the UK. Now, we are a global technology provider focusing on innovative savings and retirement solutions. We have received investments from global financial giants, uh, Barclays, JP Morgan, Natixis, Link Group, and Legal and General Investment Management, as well as supporting members and clients of the Smart Pension Master Trust in the UK. We are now working with an increasing number of the world's largest financial institutions and advising governments on technology-based retirement solutions. Despite the challenges that this year has presented, we have many reasons to celebrate. During lockdown we launched two platforms on two different continents. We have completed our strategic partnership with Link Group, and we will shortly be opening our first office in the United States. We have also grown our team nearly every week in the lockdown, and now have over 350 members of staff. Our technology is purpose-built for users, so no matter where in the world you are based, we can customize our technology to meet your needs. Our mission is to transform pension, savings, and financial well-being across all generations around the world. The delivery group helps to achieve just that. It drives program and project management activities, including the backlog and the change management. We have grown from a startup to become a significant player in the fintech industry. Over the past two years, we had to rethink, change and adapt to different ways of working. We started off with a few projects. As the company is growing, we are adding different projects to our portfolio. From platform as a service projects, through business application and IT projects to introducing new products. Our portfolio is large and very versatile. We work with all key stakeholders, both internally and externally, ensure, ensuring alignment and prioritization across the teams. Exactly for this purpose, we have concentrated the backlog and the change management within the delivery team. This way, we are in control of priorities, risks and issues that arise and can more effectively work through those. 
By resolving one problem, of course, you create another five. Thanks for sharing this, Karina. Um, would you care to kind of go a bit more into what challenges you guys were facing? I thought you might ask that, James. Um, many of the challenges I'm going to mention are pretty common and very relatable. Multiple software used pretty much for the same purpose, but somehow we could never settle with one. Why is that? I think we often find it easier to start using something um, new rather than make, make it work. Or it just sometimes doesn't fit very well with the team, right? So running a large portfolio with so many projects, it could be very challenging to align all of them with our framework too. We would see different variations of project plans, not understanding which one is the latest copy or the most up-to-date version. Sharing and auditing can be a real challenge if a large group of people is involved. Manual updates, whether running a portfolio, change or backlog management is real issue. Time can be saved with the right implementations, tools and automations. Scalability is hardly achievable without looking at these areas specifically. Before reviewing our options and trying to resolve issues that arise with such a large and rapid global growth, we had to take a step back and try to understand what actually we stand for. So we had to act. Act smart. It quickly became clear that the, to progress fast, there are four key things we should keep in mind. Agility is used frequently these days. Sometimes it is also considered as a number one requirement for startups to succeed. You can probably think of a situation yourself when you had a clear understanding of priorities and suddenly priorities shift and change. This is pretty common and this is exactly when agility is crucial. We are emphasizing the need for collaboration and this is also reflected in the tools we use company-wide. We are encouraging as much human interaction as possible. However, we know it is not always possible. We would heavily rely on our common tools and technology to communicate effectively, discuss problems, and always have the most up-to-date source of information. One of the key philosophies that we have at SMART is continuous improvement, whether it is for personal growth or ways of working. We know nothing will start perfect, but we have the right tools, skills, and courage to head towards it through continuous improvement. And the last one is transparency. We know transparency builds trust. It is important for us internally, as with our partners externally. Who wouldn't want to stay in the loop? So after running several workshops and understanding our problems and main goals, we came up with four main areas. In the next few slides, I will walk through these. SmartSeed's approach to project management makes it quicker and easier for us to build great plans and to adapt to ever so changing needs internally and externally. This reduces time spent on creating new project plans. We have used SmartSheet for our feature backlog and change management. We can constantly find different ways adopting Smartsheet in different areas of the business, like finance, operations, or big team. We have already seen the value it brings to different teams. The user experience is smooth and easy. We are able to collaborate with our partners without compromising on security. Everyone have real-time access, no delays in translation no, and efforts will be minimized. We have also experienced the relevance of such functionality when working with clients in this industry. Configurable user groups are perfect for projects and programs. Would you uh, care to elaborate a bit more on how you use those user groups at Smart? Oh, of course. Um, so. We, we have two different ways how we would approach user groups. The, the first way is looking at, uh, at them from uh, the company level. So we will be setting those user groups based on departments or teams. Um, the other side um, or the other option will be setting these user groups based on projects. 
bringing project teams together and sharing workspaces to directly to to relevant people. Um, you know, this this makes it very easy then if you have an onboarding or offboarding, uh, so you can just remove them quickly and easily uh, without again compromising on security. Well, thank you. Um, Smartsheet also allow us, allows us to maintain control by giving power to individuals. There are multiple ways of communication, whether the preference is email or Slack. Additional add-ons like dynamic view or pivot reports mean we are able to interact with other teams better than ever. Um, there are so many ways of displaying data and work with data. And the ability to create dashboards really enhances the user experience and interaction. Um, I have, I'm working a lot with engineering and product teams and the way of working is quite different on both sides. You don't necessarily want to disrupt neither of these teams and the best approach seems to be to meet somewhere in the middle. This is exactly where Smartsheet helps. Integrations with most desired software like Jira, Salesforce, Slack, you know, makes it so powerful. Interaction with teams has never been easier. Highly configurable workflows will give a variety of automations in hand. Smartsheet is very powerful with lots of different great features. And I'm going to demonstrate now how I have leveraged Smartsheet for the purpose of change and the backlog management. So we have set up our brand new change process and associated change board to tackle change requests. The audience of Smart's platform change board is very wide. Um, so I had to make sure whatever we create, it will answer most questions and it brings value to those who are interacting with the board. Change processes could be tedious. So our aim was to simplify it as much as possible, align with internal, and external processes. Change requests are raised through a change uh, form. The change form is stored on Smartsheet as well. Requests are captured in associated working sheets, uh, automatically assigned a reference number and a status new. Capture details of the change request, including the reference number, are sent in an email to the requester using the workflow. Consolidated list of new requests is scheduled to be sent weekly to our PCB group so they can be reviewed. Um, quick tip uh, for everyone. Um, I have a lot of workflows created, so you can get easily lost what is where, especially if you need to quickly update them. So I have numbered the workflows and organized them um, uh, in an order as they are triggered. Um, which you know makes it very easy to project them to your workflow or um, find them when you need to update them. Um, so if we go to the dashboard, um, the dashboard was set up uh, to allow the communication and engagement with the key stakeholders. Um, the, the, the dashboard is broken down to several sections. Um, the first section, um, which I'm going to talk about is, I will call it the counter section. Um, there are the, the various numbers are representing um, different change request types based on different reports, underlying reports. So um, if we take the new change request, it has uh, associated report, uh, which we will all, you know, people can see what has been raised and see the details of um, those requests. Um, reports can be created in different ways um, that based on dates or uh, based on specific field or status um, and also driven by a date. Um, so actions overdue is based on a review date. If uh, a date is over um, you know, a certain time, it will appear on the report. So we can action those. I think it's a great way of showing what needs to be dealt with. Um, the graphs are a good way to break a dashboard, displaying certain level of information in a nutshell. 
So in my scenario, I have used it to display the status. Um, you know, you don't need to go into details here, but I think it's, uh, it's a great way of displaying information, um, very useful. Um, on the top right corner, you can see work streams. So in our change management process, we have identified six different work streams. They are a huge part of the process, providing expertise in their own field. Anytime a request is assigned to them, an email is triggered. So the top right corner is dedicated to them, allowing everyone to check their assignment and update as required. Another quick tip, um, emails sometimes get lost. Probably you have seen it, James, as well. Uh, I would recommend to install the Slack inter integration if possible. I strongly encourage everyone in my team to do that. It makes life so much easier. Um, the next section is um, on the right, um, on here is the change management process itself. Um, the idea behind this flow diagram and putting it on the dashboard is really simple. Not everyone will understand how the process works, especially if the company is going through such a large growth. It could take months before anyone will reach out to you or find a documentation. So what we are trying to cut this time shorter by displaying it here, transparency, right? So another quick tip, you could always add a diagram, a workflow, a link uh, to, a, to another document or documentations which are relevant for your subject. It is proven to be very useful. The section on the right of the process is the client change request area. This section uh, is dedicated to our project and relationship managers. They're able to click through to the report and see the progress whenever they, they need this information in hand. Now, if we go a little bit lower, uh, there are another three uh, sections. They are all based on basic reports. And um, uh, it, it is a really good way of just, you know, encourage people to look at the request that we are receiving and identify what is actually going on in our business. So it gives kind of confidence to the requester that we have seen these requests, we are acknowledging and we are going to discuss these on the change board. Um, Everyone is able to see uh, a quick glance uh, of, of the statuses, uh, whether it's recently approved. In the, this is actually a report based on the past seven days. And um, this section is uh, showing the client approved estimations. Um, another quick tip, if you would like to make things a bit more dynamic, what you could add is the JIRA integration and the link the change request directly with JIRA um, uh, items. So you will be able to get real-time updates in your change management about real tickets. Um, so for the benefit of new starters and you know, kind of remote teams, uh, I have included on the dashboard the governance and support information as well. I think it helps to create the connection with people. There are also quick links, useful materials, and uh, JIRA boards, um, uh, calendar, and request form. So here, it's a quick link to, let's say, to a new request uh, form. This is actually the, the working sheet itself. Um, by accessing this URL, you will immediately be able to join the, the change board meeting, which is regularly scheduled. Um, this is a calendar for, for delivery items. Um, again, this is coming from JIRA, so, you know, it, it can be quite powerful. Now, the most excited um, I am probably about this section, which is the My Change Requests. Um, often requesters cannot remember the reference number of the request they, um, they have raised uh, or they can't find it. They would also like to be kept updated or track the progress in their own time. So this view makes it possible. Moreover, it's very easy to set up. I use dynamic view and the view is based on the login details of 
the user requester. So if um, it, it's funny because sometimes people will be like, oh, but I can't see anything here. And, and then, you know, it comes down to the fact that uh, this is based on who raised the change request. So you can see I have raised quite uh, quite a few myself, um, but the view will be totally different for someone else. Um, so depending who is viewing the dashboard, the view will vary. Um, approved or closed change requests are locked. This is to prevent any changes um, or you know, the change request to actually be removed or updated. Um, any requests in status uh, review in, or to review um, is updatable directly from this view, as you could see. Um, quick tip. Again, uh, I found it very useful to use conditional formatting or just add uh, some kind of symbols to your sheet, which makes it a little bit more uh, dynamic and uh, probably uh, easier to look at. Um, we can, you can, as you can see, I have used gray to kind of gray out items that have been closed. I used green if something has been approved and delivered. And I use blue for reviewable items. Just a, another quick question on this. Um, it's a great use of dynamic view and it looks really great in this dashboard, but what fields are you, I'm assuming you're hiding some fields here to stop users from going too much into detail. What's the reason for hiding them and which ones are you hiding? Uh, yeah, that, that's a very good point actually. Uh, um, we hide all fields that include automation or uh, include kind of um, uh, uh, workflows uh, in order not, not to mess up, you know, our processes. Also, um, we hide anything that is for the administrator or for, for the support team to maintain. So kind of status changes or um, approvals, uh, priorities, things like that. Um, so those are not changeable at all. And we won't display them um, on the dynamic view either. So what we allow people to do though, is to update those areas that are always available on the form as well. Um, again, as you can see, let me just come to one of them here. Um, you can see um, the, the fields that are available. So, you know, if a platform if, if it's relevant for another platform, you, someone can just update it, add another platform to it or update the details. So um, I think it's very easy for anyone to do. Um, also, they can comment and um, do attachments, uh, which is, again, I think really helpful. Amazing, thank you for sharing. Great, uh, so this gets us down to the very bottom of the dashboard. Um, uh, which is dedicated to some less important, but sometimes interesting statistics around change requests. Um, so uh, that will be my kind of use case uh, for using Smartsheet. I hope some of these tips help others to get through some of their challenges. So this is all great. I love the, the dashboard use of, of space and making things nice and clear. Um, how does this translate into smart strategic priorities? How does this all, all come together for you guys? Yeah, so a smart pension operates uh, on the smart platform and uh, serves the UK pension market. We have created a proof of concept how ideas are transformed to products and projects. We have set up several frameworks to support our growth and build to scale up. We are expanding our portfolio to complete our mission to serve the global market. So Smart is ready to lead the global fintech market. We are set up with the right tools and skills to conquer the world. And using Smartsheet, we have confidence we can continue with our mission. Smartsheet genuinely enhances our internal processes and gives us confidence in scaling up and expanding our portfolio. So thank you very much, James, for having me. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks so much for sharing your story and how, how you're managing change at Smart. It's, it's really appreciated and really great to see uh, how everything's building out. So I think we've got time for a couple of questions. 
Um, my first question was going back to your, your dashboard. You had that wonderful process map embedded as an image. And I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about how that really came to, came to the fore. Like, was that something developed in tandem with the Smartsheet processes or was it something you discovered afterwards or a little bit of a combination of the two? Yeah, I think it's a very interesting one because we always tried to approach uh, changes of the platform or to the platform uh, this way, really, using change management. Um, and we had kind of uh, before the processes not not very well defined or not kind of um, formally uh, defined. So at the beginning of this year, we, we went, went through this whole growth and we kind of had to change a little bit. Uh, and so we had to bring in what we had before, what we were thinking of and how we would like to adapt, um, uh, you know, using Smartsheet because we have used it. We have set up feature backlog with, with Smartsheet. So it kind of was um, kind of going hand in hand. Uh, we didn't want it to divert from Smartsheet because we already had some, some baseline um, for for the work, so we just continued with that, and we slightly adapted, reduced um, the process, and mapped things against one another. So you know the, how the process flows, or how actually the change management works um, entirely. So it was kind of yeah, trying to leverage as much as possible from from Smartsheet, uh, but also you know going with our our own processes um, and taking the best from both worlds, really. Wonderful. And just a last question that I think we've got time for is, um, this is obviously, like I said earlier, a wonderful dashboard. I'm guessing this wasn't kind of the first attempt. Could you talk a bit for through your kind of iteration process and how you kind of develop the solution on that iterative means? So, um, we, we haven't, well, I haven't used Smartsheet before. So I started to use Smartsheet about a year and a half now. Um, and, you know, the process was kind of slowly evolving. So the, the dashboard which I have shown today is kind of a version two of the dashboard um, that we used to have before. So um, by, by iterative kind of learning and understanding how Smartsheet works and how we are evolving, uh, we we went through some stages, um, you know how how we display things, what actually we are we want to get from the dashboard, what we want to see. Um, these were the questions uh, that we we went often like in a circle and trying to resolve the problems, you know. Um, and it was very easy at the beginning because we we didn't have many change requests, but now going up to over, I think it's now almost two hundred. Um, it's, it's getting kind of harder to maintain. Uh, and I think once you reach kind of the magical thousand, uh, it's gonna be even harder. So we will, we will have to enhance our processes and our ways of working again, I think, I think one, once more. So it, it takes a little bit, but um, it was well worth it, I think, because we, we are clearly seeing the benefits that it brings, um, you know, um, the dynamic view is really, really useful. I, I can't recommend it <laughs> really enough because it's something, um, you know, makes life a little bit easier for, for others, not even for me. Or actually even for me, to be honest, because I don't necessarily need to update it um, if someone tells me to update it. They can just do it themselves, really. So it helps both. Thanks so much for, for sharing, Karina. Um, and thanks so much for joining us. It's, um, it's been a great session. And um, yeah, I, I look forward to kind of speaking with you more and seeing how this develops hopefully next year. Um, we've got a, a few resources that we'd like to share as well. Um, so what we've got ready for you is a bit more on how you can find out about SMART and, what, and all the great work they're doing. Um, some templates, so that way you can look at what, how you can start your own change management solution, Smartsheet. Um, and also some links to Dynamic View and Jira Connector. Also, there's the notification pieces that, um, that Karina mentioned for Slack. We also offer those on both Teams and Google Hangouts, just in case you use different platforms, and all the links are available for those pieces there. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, thank you again, for Karina, for 
great presentation and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Engage Day. Take care. Thank you so much.